Hello, hello. Uh, welcome everyone. I hope you're having a great day. And today we're going to continue working on the AI pathfinding. So, <clears throat> yeah, during the last stream we um, did some experiments with a test project. Uh, where was that? This one. Uh, so yeah, we, we managed to build nav meshes for some of the locations. Um, there are still some problems that we need to solve, but generally we can do that. And uh, yeah, we were actually successful in building um, paths um, on the navigation meshes, which is great. So now we need to try and integrate it into the server and see how that goes. <clears throat> so let's start. So, um, yeah, we need to move this logic that's currently in the like AI move to position action um into into this terrain geodata provider so this is going to be our fallback path building logic um so Let's let's comment all of this out. And put it here. <clears throat> so target position is going to be two. Last position. Oh, okay, so I also need this. From is going to be the current position. Okay. We also need this variable. Well, not variable, but a property. <clears throat> and I guess normalize as well. Hmm, terrain collection, regions, ah, okay, I see. Well, there is a slight problem. Yes. We need to know the current zone for this geodata. Okay. So let me see, where do we create this one? Here. All right, so we need to be aware of the zone. So, um, actually, wait, do we? Hmm. 
no, actually no, we can skip that because this is basically the normalization of the position hmm. movement type is this one I don't think that working with arrays here in this case is nice. Instead of this, we can probably can probably just use a list. Still not gonna be a queue or like a direct uh, mapping, but it would be better than than a list than a an array. So we need to change this interface. So what I can do is I can remove all of that. Wait, path node, what is that? Position movement type. Why do they need a movement type? And this is a structure. Movement type. Mm, let me see. We also have a node here. Straight path. And this one uses list. Hmm. What are these flags? Hmm, let me see. Well, this is straight path. Hmm. Uh, hello, Ninya-san. Hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm curious about these flags and refs. What is that? Do we need that or not? Find straight path. Here we go. Start end of mesh connection. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is not something that we can 
that we can use So there, my original idea for this interface was that you supply a starting point, end point, and the available movement types for the current entity. And in return, you get a list of path nodes, uh, which contain the position and the movement type for that particular node. So for example, if an entity goes uh, from land into the water and it actually starts to swim in the water, then like the the first portion of the of the path would be with movement type walk, and then the second time will be swim. So the second half would be swim. Mm. So basically, it's going to pick uh, one of the movement types. Probably I should keep that. Okay, now do I need an array? Mm. Let's replace the array with a list for now, at least. So uh, let's go to the interface. Also, I'm going to move it to... Ah, I see. Okay, so I'm going to do it like this. And actually, can I do it like that? And I don't really like this optional argument, and I would really like to move it in front like that. So let's do that. Now I have this kind of interface. Hmm. Ah, I see. Okay, then we use ref. I don't want to create empty lists all the time. So here, for example, in the geodata collection, we call it one by one. We call each provider one by one uh, and ask it to like build the path.
It's too bad I'm playing this. I'm going to do it like that. Okay, so here we create a list of path nodes. Huh. But yeah, here we need to actually create this path node structure. like that. So now here we need to create this new path node for waypoint. We're gonna forget about, actually, I'm not gonna forget about, we're going to um, select none for now. Destination is two, but actually we need this. Now here, what we will do is, hmm. we're going to do it like this, this normalize positions. Hmm. Otherwise we just do that. So if we do the normalized positions, then uh, we need this. So 
we need from from is transform position to is target position that's wrong ah movement types here so if we successfully build the path actually what we can do is we can do it like that because the path can be the path can fail so we can do the check here if this path count equals zero then we just add the, the final destination to the path so it's never empty now here we received the path now we need to convert it to that one so for each path path node we can I do this path and q path node position we can I disregard the movement type for now so this should be working Uh, hey Kareta, uh, that go in this case maps will be flying and are teleporting through terrain. Why? Why do you think that's the case? There was no path built. You have to ignore path finding. Well, yeah. This is what can be the case. Well, actually, I will have the fallback. So, this geodata try build path. This geodata is actually a collection of different geodata providers, and uh, basically, the first one to successfully build the path will be will basically define the path uh, so we will have the new geodata provider that will work with nav meshes so if it succeeds here then we just use the path if it doesn't succeed then the next one in chain will be called just checking for count is not enough so the next one will be called which will be terrain collection in this case and this will contain all, all our previous logic to build the path um, and yeah then we will have that so but if it fails then the path will be empty in case it's empty we just add the final destination successful but without path nodes Okay, so yeah, with the navigation meshes, we also have the situation when it can build the path, but not straight to the target. So Checking for a count is not enough. So 
successful, but without path node. So, well, if it's successful, then it should provide at least one path node. That's the idea. And if it's not successful, then we will just go straight to the destination, like like we did when we didn't have any path building at all. Which I think is fine. In case when the path is successful but incomplete, we will have at least one path node where the monster will get stuck, basically, and wouldn't be able to proceed. And it's also fine. We will have that final node in the path, and that's it. It will not have the final destination. It will never reach the final destination. It will get stuck. If we say that successful result will always yield a node, it will be fine. Yeah, this is the case. In which cases it will fail if there is something totally wrong. So either we don't have any geodata providers for that zone, like we don't have any terrain, we don't have any nav meshes, then it will fail. And in that case, we just fall back to the final destination, so it just goes straight through the air, basically. The, the, nav, mesh, the, the nav mesh provider that I'm going to build uh, next it could fail if this uh, library fails. But again, this one, from my observation, observations, fails uh, only when points could not be tied to specific um, nav meshes. So it should be theoretically fine. Um, and yeah, if this fails for any reason whatsoever, then we'll go to the next terrain provider, uh, the next geodata provider, which will be terrain. It will build the path through the terrain, which is fine. Um, and then if that fails, we again, we, we just go straight to the target. So it should be okay. Now we need, now we need... Mm, now we need a new geodata provider. Oh, oops, we need a new geodata provider, uh, which is gonna be... Will look like this. Well, you say all logic as a fallback. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I've put it into the terrain where it actually should be in the terrain geodata provider because it, this whole path split and that I have right now is meant to be used only with terrain actually. So it doesn't make any sense if we don't have terrain to, to split the, the path into multiple segments. We can just go straight. So I need... I need that stuff to be... to return false always. Normalize position. This This can be actually useful. We could try to normalize the position, but for now we're just gonna return false. For now we're just trying to build the path. Okay, um, uh, 
Now here we need to actually store the the nav mesh in the memory. So how are I gonna do that? How are we gonna do that? I think to encapsulate this um properly we just need to path pass the the path to the the file because yeah this reader well maybe we can pass a binary reader right binary reader No, actually, I think I want to do it with uh, the file. Well, we can create two constructors. <clears throat> so let's create first one, which would be. Um, wait, another thing that we need is. We need different nav meshes for different sizes of enemies need at least two of them but pro probably three so in game we have uh, three entity sizes small medium and large and i guess we do need to apply different nav meshes per different sizes uh, so how are we gonna do that we can create different nav mesh provider per each nav mesh and apply some conditions. Probably that would be the best approach. So then we can ignore it for now. So um, can we just need a nav mesh path, right? Well, we we do have some more settings to it but for now that should be okay so nav mesh path and then we will just use this to load the nav mesh so we need oh yeah first we need to actually add this dependency so um, are we gonna use the source code or just a nugget package Uh, let's just use the, the package for now. Uh, where is it? Here. Actually, why is it in the game? I think it should be... No, wait, it, it, it has to be in the game. Okay, so... Um... Let me see. Okay. Oops. So what version? This one. And we also need deter. I do want to use the source code because I wanted to also try the the SIMD version of that, and that's not available as a package. And yeah, maybe in the future we would need to fork it as well. 
or at least experiment with it. But for now, for now, it's okay because to like directly include the package without any changes, I would need to implement. I would need to migrate the project to .NET 8, which I don't want to do right now. So let's just use the package. So, um, back to this thing. I guess I need this one to be configurable because this can be defined when you build the nav mesh. And I guess it's not being stored within the nav mesh itself. Uh, and we need the query. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to create the second constructor right away. So I need mm. Yeah, I need binary reader. Mm, crap, yeah, and C sharp, it's different. Or maybe we can just use this reader. Navmesh query, yeah, you, you use Navmesh query for all the operations actually. The Navmesh just stores the data. So try build path. How would that look like? Also, I wanted to just to see what I can do with this filter. Pass filter get cost. Hmm.
Ah, I see. So you can somehow define cost per different area. Wait, so uh, let me see, let me see. Crap, where was that library again? Demo. Yeah, these flags, but how can we define these flags? Said you're planning to make a couple of meshes for different sizes of NPC. Um, I'll try to implement that uh, as separate instances of this uh, NavMesh Geodata provider is just for each provider, I will probably assign some like size filters, then just filter out the sizes. Uh, hello, Rebadoop TV. Hi. How are you doing? So can I somehow modify the mesh here? I don't think I can. Getting ready for the gym. <laughs> yeah, thanks for stopping by. Uh, yeah, the project is slowly but steady progressing, trying to implement pathfinding with A star algorithm right now. Does it even need different meshes? I, I need different meshes. Ah, you, you mean, yeah, to basically, if let's say we have normal size um, agents, like normal size NPCs, and uh, some large bosses, large bosses would not be able to fit through some small passages. And to, to implement that, we actually need to create multiple nav meshes because uh, the, the size of the agent agent is defined when you create nav mesh. So I can do it here, for example, it was 0.6 default radius. If I make it like two, then I need to build a new nav mesh and you can see it's different. It's, it's totally different. So we would have to have few different nav meshes per each zone and we would have to use different nav mesh per different uh, size of the npc you, you cannot set the, the size of the agent uh, at the query time when you actually try to build the path unfortunately So back to our code filters. Do I need to somehow implement the filters now? Can skip it for now. Because I, I still have no idea how we can define flags per each um, nav mesh. Well, not nav mesh, but per, per each segment. So 
what we can do is we can just use our dummy code that we have with empty filter and then yeah we need to convert our coordinates right so to do that let's create a couple of methods um no i don't want to do virtual actually i want i probably want a static one with aggressive inlining So we need conversion between these units and system numerics vector. So let's do that. Is it structure? Structure, yeah, it is. Okay, at least that's good. Seems that you need to use the tools tab somehow. Oh yeah, maybe. Temporary obstacles, half mesh links, convex volumes. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can define volumes and assign area type. Annotation builder. Well, I guess that's the next step for now. Water. Can it actually can it actually build path in water? So if it goes into the water, it goes straight. I don't know. But I have a different logic for water and it's more complex. Uh, let me see. Uh, where is uh, create agents? Can I define Can I define the movement types for the agent? Hmm. Basically, we have slightly more complex behavior for the water because we have some entities that can go, that can swim under the water. We have some that can only swim on, on top of the surface. And we also have the ones that can only crawl on the sea bed. So they will go um, along the terrain under the water. So the, the same as if it, there was no water. So it's a, a little bit more complex than what I think this tool allows. Going to look at, at hand for the gym. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Good luck. So, I don't know, I, I don't think I need to bother with that right now. But yeah, it looks like it's a little bit more complex than I initially anticipated. But for now, we can just implement the, the simple path building. So we need this crap. Um, uh, how do I 
call it oh it's just gonna be convert so on the input we have vector three Uh, should be ref. Actually, no, if we use aggressive and aligning, then probably we don't need that. So vector three can be value. Um, and we're going to return four, oh, I already forgot. So first of all, we need to divide everything by 100. But we also need to swap Y and Z, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think so. And we need another convert, convert to process this way. And here we need vector three, which will multiply those values. Okay, I think we need to do it in a little bit smarter, more smart way to generate nav mesh with this scale. But yeah, for now, I think it's gonna be an easy fix. Get what you mean? Should be only for swimming, but crawling, yeah. You had to ignore meshes with the water somehow. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh no. Yeah. Mm. Well, we will see. For now, I just want a like straight path. So to convert it back, yeah, Z and Y. That should be fine. So now here, here I have start pause and pause. Oh wait, I forgot aggressive and line. How do I do that? Sick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But now, now I am actually thinking about it while while I'm working with all of that crap. But yeah, I should just try and implement what we have. Um, okay, we also need extent, extent. Hmm. Can I think that can be? Defined per entity type. No, actually no. This extent is only to basically snap the coordinates to correspond in nav meshes. Right? Right. So we can just define some default extent here uh, as a property. Uh, I don't want to expose these types to the outside, to the outside interface. Okay, then we need 
private uh what was that rc vec 3f um, how is that called just extent half extents And we're going to create a property um, vector three. Something like that. Can I reuse constructor to avoid cut deepen? What do you mean? Which constructor? So what do we have here? Nearest point on the nav mesh is over poly. Mm, I don't think we care about that. At least not right now. Mm. Irish John, hey, how are you doing? So now we need to check that. So it's not succeeded, then we return false. Oh, well, let's assign default value for the path. Now we need to do the same thing. Doing good, great, great. So now we need to do the same thing for the end position. So this is gonna be end ref, and this is gonna be two. And then we do the find path. Start ref and ref, start pass. Oh, okay. So let's let's do the conversion here because we do need it in two separate places. Okay, path. Um, oh, so we need to also create a list. Mm. 
we also need to check for for the success. And yeah, then we just return the value. So to do that, we actually need to iterate uh, on the new path. Wait, that's just a path. It's not it. That's just a path, which just defines the list of uh, the polygon IDs. Then we need this thing. So let's um, not, let's not name it new path, but um, path polyrefs. Then we need to build this thing. Crap, we, we gonna create lists, two lists per each, per each thing. Uh, okay. Second car, it's rubber dub. So let's copy that. Again, we need to check the status. Uh, and here it will be the polyrefs. Now, what is this? Max straight path. Oh, the, the maximum amount of nodes. I don't know. Let's hard code it for now and no options. So if it succeeds, then we do our conversion. So now we need to actually create a new weight. Maybe we can actually create an array here because we do know the well, still we're gonna need a read-only list. But okay, let's let's do the, the arrays. So here we will have a straight path count. And we do this stupid conversion then. Yeah, I can do link, but I prefer not to use link just to basically it, it's much easier to see if you're writing some shit code. Creates a lot of garbage. It's not even that. I mean, not st trying not to use it all the time just because um, it's easy sometimes to write some weird link queries that look fine on the first sight, but uh, underneath it will produce very uh, like um, an optimal code. But if you actually try to write it down as a normal code with normal code flow, it's it's much more obvious when you have some some not optimal crap like recursion or stuff like that so um now we need path add oh crap ah oh. mm, okay i guess we need four for loop why do I even bother with the race here? I guess that would be better, a little bit more optimal. Uh, so for uh, 
Mm. Actually, path land. So path i equals new path node. Here we need vector three position of. Huh. Straight path I position. And yeah, we don't care right now about the movement type. Let's set it explicitly to none so it catches our eye. Uh, what's wrong with. Oh, that's a read on the list. Okay. Oh, not return. Uh, like that. I did move the conversion, but I only did it for the numerics part. And this one is just to convert the notes, which I can do here I don't need it anywhere else so theoretically that should be fine uh, let's see can I move this hard-coded number to some property uh, let's do that mm, how is it called mm. Something like that. <clears throat> so this already should be useful. Uh, let's try and uh, wait, what, what is this? Ah, okay, see. Yeah, nav matches. Wait. I don't remember how this works. Type index collection. I think I actually need to add them in reverse order. So it should be nav meshes first, then terrain, then regions. Yeah, let's use it somewhere. Mm, wait. Yeah, it should be in reverse order because it does just iterate over every provider within this collection. So it's good that they noticed that. So we should move this one on top of volumes and nav meshes should be on the very top. No, not here, here. So this is going to be a ah, terrain collection. Okay, so what we can do is on table uh, height map. Well, I don't want to to create a new table right now. Let's just for testing purposes, we can, we can do it just in a condition. If zone ID equals 
5, which is Prantera. Then we then we do zone ge no geodata add. Wait, what? Navmesh geodata provider, and we're gonna fit in the Prantera Navmesh. This one. Just to test everything if it works. Right, <laughs> cut it. Yeah. Um, okay, now I don't think we actually have any NPCs that are working in Printera. Well, actually, we have the, the mice, we have the monsters. Um, but yeah, I think it would be better if we create a test NPC or make one of the NPCs walk um, between two points with obstacles between them. In the meantime, let's build this. Let's load the spawns. Build succeeded, it's good. So let's make Kafra move between two points. Okay, so waypoint movement, do I need something else? No, I don't think so. Let's create a couple of waypoints. So let's place first one here. And the second one behind that monument. And let's add a pause wait time three seconds the same one for this okay also let's isolate this npc uh don't remember is a spawn category or spawn group spawn category uh test now i need to enable the spawn category just this one like that and uh, yeah, I guess let's start the server and see if that works. Oh, oops, too soon. But you're in the house, well, there may be a lot of problems there. Like, doors may be too thin for the NPC to go through. Um, no, I just want to see if that works. Oh. I forgot. Uh, first of all, let me save here. Then I need 
to rebuild the, the spawns file. And restart the server. And yeah, I don't have any logs. It will be easier for me to debug it because right now we will have the only this one NPC on the whole server. But yeah, I actually just want to see visually if that works. Hmm. Hmm. It does go slightly to the side and then back. Like it looks like it's trying to avoid it and not going straight uh, to the to the other side. But yeah, it's very weird. Okay, uh, let's put a breakpoint here. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Um, it looks fine, I think, but yeah, something weird going on here. Like we have four points, like we should have four points, like the first, the, the, the initial one, then actually that may be bad, maybe we need to skip the first one, but that, that's for later. Uh, then we have another one on one side, then here, then there, right? Uh, maybe the NPC is just too fat, but still. That that looked a little bit weird. Let me try and write down the the values. How can I? Wow. Okay. And uh, let's try to inspect those points. So this is the first one, the initial one. This is the second one. Hmm, looks good. Now this path is converted to array in NPC class. What do you mean? What kind of array? Maybe the the corner is just too close. Does build the correct path, which is already great. Mm. 
Should be fine. Struggling to understand what could produce this kind of result. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It can be cli a client side bug. Mm. I think the, the client may be trying to smooth those directions out a little bit. Hmm. Or maybe the client is lagging behind a little bit. You can see it switches very quickly. After the movement started. Mm. I think this is cli a client side bug. So what could happen is when the server starts movement, uh, it sends the packets to the client and the client probably reacts too late to the movement start to actually start animate the NPC and uh, the, the NPC is already in a different location on the server. Okay, you can see it starts walking in the correct direction, but I think it's just starting, it starts walking a little bit too late. And um, before it reaches the actual point where it needs to be, the server already sends the packet to the next destination and it gets stuck. Um, 
Mm, crap, this is actually extremely bad. I think this is what ha what's happening. And... Uh, it's really bad. That means that I would have to basically rewrite the, the whole movement rendering on the client side before I can implement this obstacle avoidance system. We can test this. We can test this. Uh, let me see how we can test this. We can try to even it out a little bit and give the NPC a little bit more time. Wait, what is this? Ah, that's that thing, okay. Also, this particular NPC is working pretty fast compared to the other ones. Crap. It's definitely something wrong with the... Wait, 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 wait. Maybe just speed for this NPC is wrong. Probably that's the case. Um, let me see, let me see. Where can I look at that? Could you make NPCs ignore client collisions? I could. Mm. NPC prototypes. This is for the client side. Uh, Mr. Pitt, where are you? What? Here you are. Run speed 700. Walk speed 130. That's run speed, right? No, that should be walk speed. Okay, one sec. What are the stats? So one zero seventy one. We don't have the stats. Okay, this is a problem. Probably that's why seventy one. So we need speed one thirty seven hundred. Okay. One second, sorry, I'm not looking in the chat. It also has so much headache. 
Yeah, I think I should. But first I want to figure this thing out because it's actually really weird. I think it's it should work. Yeah, that's so logical. Well, this may be still a problem because I was loaded. Um, let's wait for the next move. Okay, I think I think now we just have to big collision for him. Like I, I can even see it on the circle. It's much bigger than it's supposed to be. Uh, so what's its body radius? Wait, thirty-five. Thirty-five. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, now I think it's just a little bit too close to the wall. Okay, uh, what was, what were the options that we used to build that nav mesh? Mm. Crap, I don't remember which one. Uh, actually, I can take a look right here. Full. Okay, so by default it's 0.6 agent radius. Hmm, it should be fine. No, I don't think that was the, the scale one. <sighs> This is ridiculous. Eh. Okay, so if we load enough mesh. Twenty two, thirty nine, fifteen. Oh, my Again, is it actually this body radius? I think it is. What if I, what if I change it to something like five? Let's see. 
Um, export. Still, I think it starts to turn a little bit er too early. But even with that, it looks like it doesn't fit. The NPC, I mean, doesn't fit. Okay. Yeah, the circle now is very small. Okay. That was actually the indication about of um, synchronization problems. It turned around a little bit before it arrived to the final point, which means on the server it reached the point where it um, I don't know how to tell it. This is it. Whatever. We still have synchronization problems. Yeah, it turns a little bit before it reaches the the corner. So we definitely have synchronization problems. Mm. This is weird. Don't think that happened before. Well, one thing for sure, we can't use um, agent radius 0.6, like we had here. We need a much bigger radius, at least two times of that. That's first. Then we also have problems with synchronization. But yeah, these doors can be a problem if we increase the radius of the agent may not fit anymore. Visually this is this looks fine. But okay, if we do it one we'll build enough mesh. Yeah, now it cannot even go through the doors. Crap. Now these doors are blocked. Wow. Mm. Also not seeing the full names of these options doesn't really help. Let me see if I can run the the C version. So 
So, uh, max climb, max slope. What are these? Max egg, what egg? No, no, no. I, I can fix UI as well. I think I should do that. I already have the project. It, actually, no, this one is running uh, from from the precompile thing. No, and I can just look into the code. Um, Yeah, this is going to be tricky. I don't think it can increase the radius of the agent because some doors will become completely broken, impassable. Can link areas like doors, yeah, I know. This looks fine, it's just on the client side, then it's not enough. Mm. Because we have too many problems actually on the client side. <sighs> this doesn't look like point six. This does, but not this. Crap, I need a separate instance of the editor. This is the collision radius that was set on him before. Yeah, it's pretty large. This is what we have right now. Point 0.6 is 60. So this should be the radius from the NPC to the wall uh right here it's definitely less than that even here you can see it Hmm. What if you artificially reduce NPC radius and client to something really small but only in pathfinding? Well, client doesn't do any pathfinding whatsoever. Uh, it just renders um the entity with certain velocity that, that moves. 
Uh, but yeah, I I could. Um, I could set collision radius for every monster on the client side to something extremely small. That would essentially mean that they will have some collisions, they will not fall through the ground and stuff like that, but it will be like a very thin rod in this, uh, going through the center of the NPC. And there there will be much less chance of them to, to catch on, on the corners. Yeah, but um, we also have other problems. So I think this Navmesh generation is a little bit odd. Don't think it's generating correct meshes. Oops. Uh, move target. Uh huh. You know what? I think I know how to make it better. Uh, we have, uh, where is it? We had some options in the straight path. Oh, here. We can... Wait, where was that? No, I think it was here. And find straight path. Bah. Uh, where is this? Options, two straight path options. Here, uh, all crossings. We can try to do that. No, it's not a dot net bug. So, uh, what I just noticed is um, when you try to well, maybe, maybe we can just use this. So to avoid this corner, ah, I see. No, it does look, look fine. Hmm. Basically, we have two points on this corner and with the default options, it tries to uh, build lines as straight as possible, even when they go uh, between uh, the, how it's called, the triangles of an avmesh. Um, but instead, I can force it to put points on every crossing. Do I have it there somewhere? Straight. Oops. I don't know, well, let's try that. I don't think it will help much actually, but I think we do need this option. Uh, 
but I, I actually thought that it tries to cut cut through the corners, but no, looks like that's not the case. It's just the nav mesh some for some reason is very close to the corner, ignoring the, the radius of the agent that was set there. Maybe it's a problem of um, voxelization. Maybe we need to make it cell size smaller. Maybe that's the problem, but okay. Um, let's see, uh, where is my server? I think I just need a little bit more uh, resolution on the nav mesh building part. But besides that, we still have a lot of weird problems. Mm. Yeah, we have a bunch of uh, corners there. Actually, it seems a little bit better, but still, uh, it's it's way too close to the wall for its um, collision radius. So what we can try is instead of doing point three, we can do point two. Ah, uh -huh. okay, I see. I think I see. Okay, let's try and build another nav mesh. Hmm. Maybe I need to do the opposite. I don't know. Looks like it's even closer. It's time for a whale practice. Okay, good luck.
really weird. No, oh, the C sharp version actually crashed. That's interesting. Uh, let's try ships on. With default parameters. Yeah, here, for example, it even steps over this thing. Okay, weird. Hmm. Yeah, this gives me much more resolution. But yeah, I think it's still a little bit too close. So what I probably need to do is increase the resolution and increase the the radius for the Prontera version. So resolution point one, pretty big. And this is 1.0. Let's try that. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Yeah, it looks like radius of one is maximum that we can afford. Otherwise, a lot of doors will be completely impassable. still building. Yeah, I guess it's a bit too much for it to ask. I can chop off some... Yeah, it crashed. I can chop off some uh, sections of the model. 
maybe mm. let's see what can i do Let's just select a few models here. Come on. So maybe that would be enough. Let's include the lamp. And export this. Wait, what? Oh, that's STL. We need to convert STL to obj file. I forgot about that. But maybe actually we have enough here. No, I don't think so. Um, before doing that, let me also include this piece in that building. So zero point zero one can see it. Okay. Uh, export obj. Okay, now I should be able to load it. All right. Right. Where is the, the other building? Oh, it's flipped. Here it is. 
But okay, we can already try and build the navigation mesh. So if we do point one here and one point zero here. Okay, so we have the passage through this door mm, and I think we have this one, but I didn't include the door, let's do that, the door is important. <clears throat> uh, file export. Okay, let's also do the scaling. So this is minus 0 0.1. Okay. Export my front. This one. Okay, now we have the door. Let's build the mesh. Okay, looks like we still are fine. So yeah, that, those are the options that we need to we need to use. The problem is it takes way too much resources to build this nav mesh for the full uh, full map. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I think this is the resolution that we need to use. Hmm, okay. So, uh, to, to that, guess I need to export the location in a little bit more intelligent way. So, we need All of that. Oh my god, I can't select it. I need to exclude a bunch of terrain because there's a lot of problems. Also, I don't think we have everything here. No, oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, probably I need to create a new group uh, of objects here that will exclude um, stuff that we don't need. I don't know.
My god, this is slow. Okay. No, I need this piece. This is so bad. I don't think it can do anything else. We need these models. All of them. Maybe excluding the water. I'll see if this is a problem. I need this terrain. So I don't think it can exclude any more pieces, unfortunately. Nope, I need this. Okay, maybe we can exclude this this mountain. Mm, it's super slow because he basically tries to check every object uh, on the screen if I selected it or not. It's extremely stupid. Maybe I can zoom in like that. Okay. Nope, I need this piece, unfortunately.
maybe I can exclude this one. Yeah, and this one. Okay, I think this is it. Probably I can't remove any other pieces. Oh, maybe this small one. That's not a lot. No, I can't even touch that one. So yeah, I guess this is it. We need everything else. Okay. Please don't crash. Okay, we good. Now let's import it. Point zero one scale. Mm, we need to mirror it like that. Okay, don't think we can get rid of anything else. Right now, export my front this one. Let's restart everything. It's actually for some reason larger than the, the object that we were working on. Weird, but okay. Let's try to load it. Okay. So now I really want to decrease the scale to point one and radius to one. Let's see if it crashes. But yeah, basically that means that um, that we probably can't do that for big locations, like open zones. It will just crash. So probably we need to either build a custom tool for that. Make sure it doesn't crash or figure out why this demo um, project crashes. Mm. Oh, okay. Looks like we are good. Let's let's save the mesh. And let's go take a look. Also, yeah, it tries to build the nav meshes on the regions where it shouldn't try to do that. But it's okay. Okay, I think this is a little bit better now. Uh, we still have our door here. And we still have our door here. That's great. Okay. 
Overall looks good. It's just yeah, we don't need the nav meshes on top on top of the roofs, uh, on top of the mountains where it's not reachable. And I'm not sure how to exclude those. But okay. Mm, we saved the nav mesh. Now I guess we can try and use it. Mm, where was it? Zone table. Here. Let's see if that made any difference. I think it's even worse for some reason, but maybe that's just the first movement of this NPC after the, the map is loaded. Let's wait for the next one. Yeah, it was a huge desync. Now it's still going straight for the corner. It's even worse. How is that possible? Hmm. Where was that crowd control, I think? Create... Hmm. Uh, maybe we we'll have some kind of um, discrepancy in the calculation. Or maybe do it happened during the conversion of the models. So what I can try to do is like create a third point. Mm, maybe we can place it here. The second one is here.
like that. Let's export this. But yeah, looks really weird. I'm not sure what what's wrong there. Really weird. Wait, why? Why is it walking back like in the previous uh, case? Oh, okay. Weird. Ah, okay, I understand now. Um, I need four points to make it work like I want it. Wait. No, it should be fine. What? Why is it working this way? Okay. Let's move this point to here. Let's try it like that, but also I forgot I need to add the wait time right here. Okay, now it goes around this corner. And yeah, looks like it's a little bit off. Well, not a little bit. 
it's very off. So maybe we have some conversion discrepancies or something like that. It looks like the whole model is shifted to the side. So yeah, looks like it's a little bit shifted. So maybe the problem is not in the synchronization itself, but in the coordinates somehow. Mm. I have no idea how I can fix this. Well, maybe if we import PSK. Let's see which one can we look at. Okay, so this one maybe, uh, this is, wait, where is it defined? I already forgot, here, uh, small mesh, don't send, small mesh, here it is. Where is it? Oh, there it is. So we need to scale it down. There it is. And we need to mirror it here. No, no, we don't. Uh, we need to crap. It's not there. Hmm. How do I do this? Let's try to put it in this location. Wait, what? Okay. I guess minus. No, it's still off. Uh, 
Yeji calls me. Good Saturday, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by. Crap, how do I do this? Hmm. Yeah, maybe now I can inverse this. Hmm. Hmm, still a bit off. But yeah, looks a little bit closer to where it's supposed to be. But I'm not sure what's wrong. Hmm. How it's going? Well, it's extremely weird. Looks like the whole model is shifted a little bit. So this is why we have uh, the problem with the corner. So he goes around the corner here, leaving huge amount of space, but gets stuck here. So it looks like we are... Um, there are some kind of problem during the conversion of the models and we do that a lot of times in different programs i have no idea how we can fix this like here it goes around the corner flawlessly but get stuck there so yeah looks like the whole nav mesh is shifted a little bit to the side hmm And I was trying to align the mesh here in Blender. So this is the mesh imported from the editor directly. I just changed the scale. And this is the, the dude on the horse imported from the PSK files and assigned with the same location as we have uh, in the Unreal Editor here. Doesn't have any scale. So yeah, I have no idea what's going on. What if I moved something? No, I did not. I'm pretty sure. Like I exported this particular model and it's at zero. Only thing that I changed is the scaling. So if I remove the inversion here, remove the inversion here. Mm, I also need to invert this still at the same point, just inverted. And the import models, you flip the whole, whole map here. Yeah? It's just, looks like that's how Unreal exports it and um, Blender imports it. It's just mirrored. But again, this mirroring affects the whole map drastically. So here you can see if I uh, remove this flip, it 
basically goes completely to the opposite side of the map. It's not like it shifts by, uh, I don't know, 500 units or 0.5 meters. It's completely different. Hmm. Look at the position of statue right now. Where? The editor? So th these are the coordinates. And these are the same coordinates that we have uh, for all the other models. It's just the way the printer is built. Everything is placed with the same coordinates and the actual position is changes, changed in the blender or whatever. Um, but yeah. One second, let me try again if I... Where is the dude on the horse? So this is at zero, this is flipped. Where is the dude again? Oh, the scale is one. Wait, I lost it. Where is it? Oh my god. Okay, well, let's start from scratch. So, um, let's open Blender. File import. Uh, let's try the normal STL now. Maps. This one. Scale 0 0.01. Also, maybe we can switch minus Y forward. Hello? Okay. Mm, no, it's flipped. Minus Y didn't help. The buildings on the, are on the other side. Uh, okay, let's try different settings. Still, this. Uh, so Y forward. Z up. Mm. X forward? You can focus on object by pressing a dot on keyboard. Thank you. Now it's still flipped. Okay. Yeah, I don't think the axis has something to do with that. So we're gonna just use this one. We're gonna set Y forward as it was. Um, and import. Also I need, come on. Also I need this thing to be bigger. So right now it is flipped, right? Yes this. So now we... Did I forget to import, uh, set the scale? No. Oh, maybe it's already applied the scale. Okay, whatever. Uh, scale y minus 1. Now, yeah, now it's correct. Okay, now Import Unreal Engine PSK Small Mesh Dong Seng uh, Import Dot on Keyboard
I have no idea. Uh, but okay. Um, let me see. There it is. So for this one, we do scale 0 0.01. 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Uh, it's flipped. Uh, let's wait. Again, I, I'm, I'm doing that on the armature for some reason. I don't need to do that on the armature, I need this on the low. Actually, doesn't matter. So where is it, Dong Seng? Here it is. 0 0.01. This one is minus 0 0.01. This is 0 0.01. So it's there. Then we take these coordinates that we have in the game. We apply the location, but we divide it by 100. You can already see that Y should be negative. So let's make it negative. It's still there under the mountain instead of being there. But that's not even a problem. It's just I was trying to align the model that um, Unreal Engine exports with Geometry Export. Um, with the model that we import directly from the game. They don't match at all, not even close. Well, somewhat close, but yeah. What if I apply the same coordinates to this thing? Well, no, it's not going to work like that. Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see. Um, I know why they, they don't align. Probably. Maybe not, actually. No, wait, I don't know. These coordinates are assigned per each specific model. Yes, they are the same. But if you combine all those models, maybe Unreal sets different location for the whole like combination of the models. Probably not. I don't know. And still that doesn't explain why we have a very small discrepancy uh, in the in the calculation. It's not like miles away like here. Where is the to do the horse? Here it is. A numpad. Okay, thanks. This is actually very useful. But yeah, I, I just need to learn Blender. I wanted to do that for a long time and yeah, it's just I'm not using it too often. Mm.
still it doesn't explain like this discrepancy it's too huge it doesn't explain why we have a shift of like maximum 1000 units or one meter shift I have no idea. This is extremely weird. Okay, uh, we have this file, right? Let's delete this dude on the horse. And let's export this as object. Actually, wait. Uh, import STL. Mm. Scene unit. Mm. I don't think I did. We could do anything around here. So uh, if we export this, let's try this one now uh maps here tf01 without any scaling apply modifier see so yeah, that would flip our model then see what could go wrong here let's save it um now we copy this object file to the demo replace let's restart the demo here Wait, what's that? Um, wait, on which side is that? On the side of the church in front of the castle. I I was looking at the wrong place. There is a door. <laughs> what? What? Like what? <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. Okay, never mind. Uh that's not important. So we have that. Can we somehow verify the coordinates? Um let's see if we select the lamp post, where is its uh pivot point? Come on. Where is the pivot point? Can see it. It should be somewhere in the center, right? Mm. Let's try to rotate it. Yeah. Ah, oh, I see. It's there. Slightly to the edge. Weird, but okay, whatever. Um maybe we can find a better object with with like an actual center point somewhere. Um Hmm. 
what can we try and use this thing maybe still this one's not in the center uh probably lamp post would be fine but i would really like to check any object that's actually in the coordinates to take and click mm. let's let's use this lamp post So, what was I doing? Oh, okay. So let's see if I click here. Um, one thirty nine point three, one thirty eight. Okay, uh, what's the other coordinate? Seven seven zero point six seven seven zero okay maybe point six but the X doesn't really match mm. Where is the pivot point again? Let's hide this crap. here yeah it should be somewhere over there okay let, let's try this mailbox or not mailbox but uh how do you call it i don't know how okay, how do you call it this thing where is the pivot point? There. Mm. No, I can't tell where it is. Oh, crap. Well, we can scale one of the lanterns down and do the export again so it will be much more precise i i have no idea what object i could use otherwise mm, maybe something here Oh my god. Where is the pivot point? In the in the middle of the the thing. Hmm. Come on. Oh my god. <sighs> okay. 
this one in the middle. But okay, here we can actually try and aim somewhere specifically. Wait, where am I? One seventy nine point nine. Mm, okay, close. Seven fifty point one. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. This looks fine. <sighs> okay, this one's very close to the center, so maybe I can click that one as well and check. Ah, this way. Yeah, pretty much in the center here. So one forty eight. Yeah, one forty eight point one, one forty seven. Maybe the scaling is off, not the position, and it gradually slides. Hmm. Uh, but okay, the se second one is nine six six point three. Yeah, 966.3. So, yeah, there is some kind of discrepancy on the X. And the X is actually that way. Hmm. So, let's see, 148.1. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What else can I check? Maybe something here. Some box or something. I have no idea. It's gonna be hard to check these ones. Maybe something in the castle. Yeah, like some kind of book maybe. This lamp. Yeah, it's right in the middle. So let's zoom out. Mm, where am I? Okay. 
need to go this way, maybe higher, yeah, okay. Here is the lamp. So 32, 34.2, 33.2. 254.3 Yeah I don't know I don't know I don't know So this one uh, In Unreal it's lower by approximately 1 Okay If we pick an object on the opposite side of the castle Wait, and uh, there somewhere, like a wine bottle. Hmm. Oh, maybe this one, this, this table has the pivot point in the middle. We can check that. Where is it? Yeah, it's in the middle. So it was and in Unreal it was less by one. Right? Uh wait, I need to go here. Um there, here it is. Two fifty point three to forty nine point three. So it's off by one. Hmm. Why? But okay. Let's assume that it's off by one. Um, can we move it in Blender? Maybe, or maybe we can hard code it here. That would be quicker. So here, the result now. Well, just to test if that's true or not. We can do it here. Uh, so the X, when converting from Unreal coordinate to that, we should add one. And here we should subtract one. Let's try and see how that looks. But yeah, it's extremely weird. We can also check how that looks like in Blender. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can find coordinates for specific objects. Like that table, for example. Eh. Wait, why can't I go inside the model? No, oh my god. Okay, whatever. Uh, what did I want to do? Yeah, I restarted the server. Now let's see if um, the, the path that the NPC goes over is better. Hmm. 
What was that? Some weird legs, but it looks better. I think it's just the NPC is rotated that way. Still weird. But yeah, now the path actually looks correct. And this path would actually work with the real mm, NPC collisions. What's what's going on with with that? Weird glitches. Something's still wrong. But yeah, this this looks better. Uh, not sure why the NPC glitches a little bit. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know, I know why. Um, one second. I'm doing this wrong. So, vector 3, this should be plus 100. So I should first apply the that thing. So let's do it like that. I first need to convert the actual units. Ah, wait, okay, uh, one second, one second, one second, one second. Uh, my brain is melting. Um, this is Unreal coordinates. So this should be plus one after we divide it. But this one should be minus one before we multiply it here. Okay. Uh, one sec. Hmm, it's a bit too close to the corner, but okay, well, let's give it a minute, because it was actually working when we loaded into the level. Okay, there is a decent amount of space. That's good. Okay, the glitching is gone. Okay, the same amount of space on the corner. I have absolutely zero idea why do we have this exactly one meter discrepancy. <laughs> what the actual hell? But yeah, now it works fine. So I guess now if I uh, set the collision to what it was before, it's gonna start working properly. It was 35. Let's see. But 
Okay, also I had some kind of warning. I should explicitly declare the order. Okay, now I have proper collision radius. Let's see. Does get a little bit stuck on the corner, I think. But that, I believe, is because of the synchronization. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we have not exactly one uh, meter, but maybe it's slightly less. Also, yeah, we definitely have some kind of uh, synchronization problem. I don't want to try and fix it. Yeah, that was definitely because of the synchronization. Okay, so if we now um, allow it to send the next position again, Let that break everything. Let's let's watch closely. No, it's fine. Okay, I want to adjust the test a little bit. Um, let's see. So right now we have four positions, uh, three positions. Let's make it four. So um, I want to place this one there. this one on this side next to the statue like that let's move them away just a little bit and then on this side Put this one here. And this one here. And let's assign the, the wait time for every node.
Okay. And let's test this one. So I'm trying to make it walk alongside each uh, side of the statue. That would let me see more clearly what's the actual discrepancy. Uh, one second, what do I need to do? I need to log out, export the data. Did I export data here? Wait, what? Why does it go that way? Hell. Crap, I don't have this nav mesh anymore. Weird. some reason it decided to go that way between these two points but okay this should theoretically fix it maybe it's just the problem of the resolution of uh, the nav mesh um what was it doing ah actually actually no, it's just how a star works. These two paths, basically these one, these ones, are located on the same. Wait, 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 wait! I need to load the nav mesh. Mm. So I added a couple of points. What do you mean? Mm, this one, I believe. And I need to open already created nav mesh. This one. It's just probably there is more uh, polygons on one side than on the other. And that makes the A star to prefer the the right position come on
Yeah, there is a bunch of these. Actually, well, let's see if we place a point here and another one here. Yeah, it goes that way. If we place another one here and here, well, it should go that way. Hmm. Oh, maybe there was they were just a little bit too uh, close to each other. I know. Uh, let's spread these two a little bit more. No, I think this one's totally fine. Let's export. Wait. Oh, wait. Uh, I see. They are probably not cycled through. Well, no, they should be. They should be cycled. I don't know. Well, let, let's test this this variant. Wait, what? Uh, why did it ban you? I have no idea. Ah, oh, I see. But yeah, now it should theoretically be fixed. It's just A star for some reason preferred that way, even when the NPC were standing here. Oh, now it goes correctly. Hmm. Okay, I need to revert back to a very small collision radius because right now the client nudges the, the model a little bit. It's still a little bit too thick. Mm, one second. It was cycled before, it's just the A star algorithm preferred one single way for both um, travels, both uh, directions. Uh, so one second, I need to export this. Compile this. Compile this and restart. Okay, let's take a look. Hmm. It's a little bit closer here on this side, maybe, maybe not. Let me take a look one more time. But I think we can forget about it. Yeah, moonwalks 
uh, because of the synchronization lag. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit weird. Uh, let me see. Hmm. I don't know. Should be parallel, but it's not. Yeah, like it should be parallel to, to the statue. Hmm. Weird, but okay, uh, let's do a more complex test. Um, let's take you. And uh, make you go over waypoints. And let's put some more complex waypoints. So let's make it go outside of the building here. Right? Mm. And then, then. Wait a second. Yeah, it's okay. Um, then we can add another waypoint and make it go. Well, wait, let's just make it go to this side. To here. Uh, also, let's add some wait time, so the client has some chance to catch up. Uh, we need to mark this as test category and expert. Also, I want something much more complex. Um, let's pick this one. Mm, yeah, let's pick this one. Uh, we gonna change it again to waypoint movement first point would be somewhere here sure no let's actually make it right next to the spawn point the second one gonna be somewhere at the end of the zone like, let me get like here. And let's also mark it as that. Oops. 
was 30. Test. Expert. I forgot to assign speed for them, but that should be okay. They, they should have speed 400. Shouldn't really matter. In this case, we already fixed a bunch of problems that were related to the movement speed. Weird. Where is this one? Uh, what? Oh, here you are. The hell? Maybe we do need to fix the speed. <laughs> what the hell? So how does the movement speed affect the synchronization? Ah, I know, I know how. Uh, because the client thinks that the default movement speed is one thing and the server thinks that the default movement speed is another thing and the server just sends Okay, it's hard to explain, but I, I need to actually specify correct movement speeds. Um, one second, where is it? So I need Nicole Rosen's U. Um, where is the stats? Uh, these ones. My PC is lagging so much right now, it's ridiculous. And also, who was there? Um, Arana's dot. Uh, where are you? Okay. Uh, where is the movement speed? Here it is. So yeah, default speed is very important, looks like. Uh, let me, yeah, this is only a server side change. So I need to export this, compile this, and restore the server. Yeah, it is different speed for the client and server. The, the, on the server side, they move faster. So the server thinks that the NPC already reached the point, but on, this, on the client side, it's not. This one's still weird, but that's maybe because I just loaded. 
or maybe because the path is too too long that's probably what happens um so let's see where is that katlia didn't notice her outside that's weird that's the second time when that happens but okay looks like This is still broken. What the hell? This one's working though. At least I think it is. Yeah, it is working. Mm. Probably the path is too long. So let me see. Uh, what if we make segments? Find path. Um, mm, let's put a breakpoint here. Just I think that the path is too long and it falls back to uh, like default straight line. Okay, find path failed. Mm. Why? Wait, what? Oh. So we we have technically Yeah, here it actually works. It should be working. Why does it fail? Great. Mm, start. Oh, start ref is zero. Didn't find the start polygon, <laughs> but returned success. I can't. This library. One thirty seven point one seven 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 point one. What are the extents? Oops, 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 oops. I forgot to set default value for the extents. Buff. Oh. So, uh, can I do it here? Okay.
Let's actually make it something like three meters. Just in case. No, wait, that's half extent. So total, well, no, it's fine. Let, let's, let's make it three, three meters. Um, and restart. So yeah, probably the waypoints that I placed were too far away from the nav mesh. So it failed. Oh, hello. That one goes somewhere. Okay. What about you? You're still bugged, but that's probably because I just loaded. it. I'm gonna find him later. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I need to reduce the, the collision radius so it's easier for me to see um, the actual uh, walking path, not just... Yeah, like here, the, the engine slightly nudged it to the side. But yeah, it's already working somewhat. We still have a problem when we just load it on the map with the NPCs already walking, but that's a separate problem. Nice. Uh, that one was not really nice, but still, that's okay. Uh, let's go find that guard. Oh my god, can I type? Yeah, the guard is, is walking, actually. <laughs> you could reuse a constructor with the same cut. Yeah, I... I know, the problem is one of the constructors has the using um, directives that surround the other constructor, which is bad, actually. Okay, this was weird. I I'm gonna fix that later. And actually, I'm probably gonna just remove the second constructor. Yeah, it actually looks like it's working, even though there is not enough space here, really. But yeah, I think what I need to do is I need to basically get rid of the collision radius for all the NPCs, make it very small, like one unit maybe, but still make it work properly with like mouse hovering, with the target selection and other um, stuff where the actual collision is being used. So... So they don't get stuck accidentally, but it's already working. And yeah, looks like it's just off by one meter. The, the whole model is off by one meter. So somewhere along the way, uh, along the long path of conversion, we're introducing a discrepancy of exactly one meter. This looks great. <sighs> mm. 
But okay. That's fine. So, currently we have collision, not that collision, snuff meshes for Prontera. Uh, let's try another location, maybe Hadmimis. Mm, maybe not. Maybe let's try outside Hadmimis. Um, let's see. So this is fine, I can... Mm. Just in case, I think I'm gonna save this... Well, I'm gonna save it as a separate file. Um, just so I can uh, export it again without manually selecting everything. Um, something like that. Now we can close this. I think we can close this as well. And this. So the settings, yeah, I don't see the settings here, but the settings that we used, the settings that we used that worked out was radius one and, uh, and rasterization cell size 0.1. Because 0.3 is a little bit, actually, Actually, I think we can try and use point three. Like if I build nav mesh here, it's much smaller. It builds much faster, only six seconds. And I think that's actually enough. Like we don't need that high of a resolution. Still have a door here. Um, let's let's try with this nav mesh. Uh, wait, I need oh oh yeah, I need one meter radius for the agent. I cannot go lower. Let's see, can we still go through the doors? No, this one is blocked. This one is blocked. Well, okay. Then we use point one. And it should be fine. Well, actually, now I'm curious. If I still use point six radius. But we apply our correction. Maybe that would work out. Maybe the problem was with that offset of one meter. Uh, let me save nav mesh. I need to copy its name. And let's try and load it here. Because if I can use this resolution of 0.3, that would be great. Because otherwise, probably uh, this demo application will crash on big maps. Okay, let's look for this one. Mm. 
it's a bit too close to the wall to my liking but yeah if we reduce the collision of every NPC and monster then it should be fine maybe yeah it's a bit too close to the wall hmm but still it's it's working fine with this collision radius Yeah, it gets a little bit stuck, but if I reduce her collision radius, I think that would be fine. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so, let's try and actually create a nav mesh for this map this would be a great test because this map is huge but shouldn't be a big deal well actually maybe it is gonna be a big deal we'll see oh, come on Well, yeah, it is almost empty, although, yeah, the, there is a lot of, like, fences, rocks, and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it's just the overall size. I think it's gonna just crash that um, demo application. So, let's export... Not F02... STL... Can't even crash the editor. I <laughs> uh, yeah. mm. was just about to say. Yeah, that's a problem. Maybe I can build a, a little bit more optimized exporter for this specific case. But yeah, that's a problem. Come on. Oh my God. What else we can do? We can maybe split the map into multiple nav meshes. But that may be weird. Uh, like if if we have to make a monster go from one nav mesh to another, that can be a problem. Uh, I don't know what to do. I think just for testing, I will just select the terrain and export only that. Uh, where was that? So 
search for actors. Terrain info, we have two of them. Or is it this selected? Okay. Yeah, crap. Okay, one of them is here. How do I select the second one? Oh, here it is. I got extremely lucky to stumble upon it. So now we have terrain info selected. Let's export it. Oh, wow. Really? Hmm. How is that possible? Okay. This is weird. I really wanted to test that map and see how that um, affects the performance of the server, because there is a lot of monsters on that map. Um, hmm. But yeah, maybe I do need to create some kind of custom exporter. Maybe try to include only the geometry. Uh, okay, what what else can we try? Frontera, region. Mm, which one? Let's try this one. It has bonbons. That would be a nice test. So, come on, load. Nope. Okay, I don't know what to do. So it looks like the terrain is too huge to export for some reason. Actually, let me do it like that. <sighs> nope. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay, let me see if I open just a single terrain, well, select just a single terrain. Um, this one. Oh my God, it's so slow. Terrain in for zero. Hmm. Okay. Looks like we got something. Four megabytes. Crap, this is the big one. Okay. Then we need to run in for two. And we crash. Great. So why could we crash here? Let me see a second. Probably the array of triangles is the problem. We collect all the triangles of the map in a single array and then we output them in the in the file. That's really bad. Hmm. Why do we need it like that? Okay, I think I know how to improve this. <laughs> One second. Oh, static meshes are different though. Oh, but we process vertices of static meshes. Hmm, okay. Pff, 
Okay, one second. Let me try and crash it again. Okay, uh, realloc, F array. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the problem. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Normal. Okay, I think I can try and optimize this right now real quick. Um, let's try it for now only for the, the terrain. Well, no, I'm going to do it later. Uh, so what I wanted to test, uh, I really want to test if this um, one meter discrepancy is for Prontero map only. So I need some other map. Uh, let's maybe take the covert. That one should be easy to export. Okay, this one's working. Uh, so, uh, where is it? Okay, here we go. I'm actually not sure how it's gonna build the nav meshes, but we can try. Um, so we need to invert Y axis. Like that. Yeah, looks good. Now we export this one. Yeah, it is a covert, the covert. Okay. So 
So last time we tried 0.6. So yeah, default options. That actually did work out. It's just the NPCs are a little bit too close to the wall to my liking. But if we would increase the radius of the agents, then we also need to increase the resolution um, of the voxel map. Which gonna be a problem on big levels. So let's load the culvert. Okay. And that this one can be weird. Could be weird. Well actually. Actually. It looks somewhat okay. We have the the barrels. This actually looks good. Hmm. It actually builds nice paths. It went down to the second level. Uh, for some reason it went straight here. Wait. I ah. ah, okay, so it descended to the bottom. This is actually cool. Yeah, it picked the the bottom the bottom path. Okay, looks good. So let's uh, save it uh, and test it. I forgot what's the ID of this map. Nine, okay. So for map number nine, I have this now mesh. Okay. Now let's restart the server. Oh, yeah, thanks. I forgot. I, I am just gonna restore the normal spawns. I wanna, uh, I wanna try and let every monster on that map 
to use the nav meshes. And that's already a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a big problem. Come on, it's not even loading. And we have a huge memory consumption. For some reason. Maybe that's actually the creation of all those lists. But yeah, this this is bad. It's gonna crash. Well, it's still going. Let, let's see what's happening in the game. It's standing. Okay. Well, well, so the AI is basically standing in place. And the memory consumption grows. I need to kill it. Huh. Huh. Why? I don't believe this is just because of this lists. Could be, but I don't believe that's the, the main reason. Hmm. Not about instances of the providers, just one instance. Well, two. We have one for, for Prontera and one for um, the Culvert. Hmm. Yeah, I could. I just don't really want to do that.
<sighs> Let's try. Oh, wait. I did just start mm, my instance. How can I close this? This is shit. Um, how do I attach to a process? I guess here. Okay. What? Can't attach? Uh, stupid thing. I already forgot how to handle it. So, uh, one sec. Oh, come on. I don't remember the arguments. Actually, it should be fine by default. Let's try and start it. What? <sighs> you stupid shit. <laughs> Sorry. Can you keep the console? Mm, didn't make it in time. Okay, can't find part of the path. Sure. Can't find type. What the hell? No, wait. Uh, ah, I see. Wait. Why are you looking for that file in that path? Oh my god. Yeah. 
Here we go. Four. What? That was weird. But okay, it's growing. Gen two large object hip twelve gigabytes. Wow. Large object hip, 12 gigabytes. What could place so much data on large object hip? Hmm. Out of memory, okay. I guess that's it. Stop. <clears throat> Path note. Wait, 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 wait. this array why why this array is a problem I guess it's just too much mm, memory pressure Should be fine. But yeah, I guess this is just too much memory pressure. List of path node. Hmm. Crap, I don't remember how to use this program. Yeah, it doesn't really look healthy. You have to make a snapshot at start. Why? To compare. I see. Okay, maybe I'm gonna do it. So here we have our update path. Probably it's because we are converting the list yeah, set capacity. So yeah, it does create a list. 
even though we are using the, the array, it doesn't really matter. So probably I do need to use the interface that I was planning to use previously with just separate count and separate array and I can cache that array. Um, still, I'm struggling to understand why exactly this is a problem. So we create an array here. We return it as a read-only list. So here it's cast into a list. Add with resize. That's okay. It's not doing what I actually expected. I thought it would just cast the interface and that's it. It's not doing that. Maybe I'm just stupid. But okay, we can improve this in a way. Okay, okay, I'll do that. So the first one was before we connected to the world, so before creation of zone instances. And now here we are creating, let me take another snapshot just in case. Here the, mm, the zone instances are created. So the entities should start using um, the nav meshes very soon. Yeah, here we go. Now it grows. Okay. All right, um, let's compare these two. So, how do we do this? So, what does, what does this give us? I don't really understand. Start by object. New object. And new object. Okay. Oops. What? I don't know, I'm so confused. <laughs> what? 
Well, I know what is the what is the problem. I'm just struggling to understand why that is a problem. Um, and I know how to solve this. It's just I don't really like that solution, but probably that's a good idea to do it like that. Um, Actually, wait. Uh, let me see. Let me. Wait, wait. Crap, 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 crap. Oh, wait. Workspaces. No. It's gone. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. This thing. Okay, so if I open the snapshot. Uh, this crap four objects wait four objects two gigabytes it's not old it's... it's the last snapshot So I'm looking at the size. I have four objects of path node to take two gigabytes. How is that possible? But Can I see the size? So looks like, to me, it looks like it's just creating too big of an array. So what the actual hell? Yeah, somebody decided to run through the whole universe, it seems like. Mm. That is extremely weird. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> Excuse me, what? <laughs> 67 million points. <laughs> Excuse me, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> how is that even possible? How, how does that list even exist? um okay how do we limit it and, and and why doesn't this work have max segments set to 128 uh excuse me what <laughs> maximum number of points the straight path array can hold <laughs> Uh, that looks like a huge bug in the library. I don't know. How else that could be possible? String path count. 67 million. How, how that survives? What is this? Can you not? Windows, what, what, what are you doing? Okay, whatever. 
Uh, so if I disable that thing, um, would that help in any way? This is that. Mm. Oh my god, it's still running. <laughs> my poor PC. Oh my god. It was consuming 50 gigs of memory. <laughs> ah, okay, so what if we... What if we start a new profiling... Uh, wait... Home... Start... It's growing. No, that's not helping. Also, my Discord is, is that <laughs> probably out of memory. Okay, uh, whatever. Wait, did my stream crash? <laughs> what? No? Well, Twitch doesn't... doesn't... think that way? <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, Twitch uh, sent out notifications about the stream going live. Again. Weird. Oh, uh, kill, 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 kill. Kill this monster with fire. 28 gigabytes. Ah, my poor PC. So, the same problem, right? Four objects, two gigabytes. Yeah, didn't help at all. Uh, okay, one sec. Uh, can we... Uh, max straight path, maximum number of points. Okay, well, let's see where this one goes. Well, max straight path. What the actual hell? What is this crap? Uh, oh, okay, this is update. Try to log a couple of things. Start and end in position. Uh, uh, what? Location, a path. I, I don't understand. So this only being used in a pent vertex, pent portals. Okay. Mm. 
make a log of what is happening in good run log. Well, I don't think it's gonna help. Uh, I am gonna debug in a moment um, and see uh, what are the numbers of the, the the sections, but I want to try and understand how is it possible that it ignores this argument or do I understand it wrong? Append the vertex If count is less than straight path, then it adds. So it looks like this is the only place where this library can add values to this list. And it does check for this uh, argument. It looks fine on the first glance at least. So it only uses append vertex and append portals. Append portals uses append vertex. I have no idea how that is possible, but okay, okay, let's let's do the debugging. So um, If um, straight path land, I'll count more than one thousand. And yeah, in this case, I need to start the debugging from here. Hopefully, that still works. What? Ah, I'm building the release configuration. Nothing. The hell. Looks like it's working perfectly. <laughs> what the actual hell? It's actually working. Oh no, 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 this is Vault Server. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, crap, where is this debugging process? No, it's still growing. But it doesn't hit the breakpoint. What? So somebody is lying. Probably this thing is lying. Hmm. Let me start again. I think I was too late. It's 
process gone. Yeah, I think so. Count is two, two. I don't know, I think that the memory profile is lying. Wait, now it's gone. Now it's dead. Let's try again. I didn't notice the last value. I don't think the the analog will be able to output anything. Maybe, but it's just dying in such a weird way that I don't think it will make it to the logs. Yeah, it was two, and then it's gone. Mm. Hmm. They still have different providers. What? Do, oh, yeah, I do. Also, this runs <clears throat> in multiple threads, which also probably doesn't help. Mm, one second, where is the config? The old logic for pathfinding? Don't think there is anything wrong with that. Okay, same thing. Mm. Like if I comment out this thing, it will go, it will fall back to the old logic. 
Let's try that, I guess. Hmm. I don't remember actually what was the memory consumption of the old server. Oh crap, yeah, it's growing. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like there is something else wrong. Hmm. Okay, this this actually can run in an inf infinite loop. Probably that's what's happening. One sec, I'm gonna check the memory consumption. Yeah, I think this is what happens. We have infinite loop here. Yeah, it's not growing anymore. Um, so let's check. Um, So we had last position. Uh, that what that was transform that position. Okay. Yes, that matches. Uh, two. Two was target position. Looks fine. Movement times don't matter. So last position. Direction. Target position minus last position. Distance. Max segment length. Max segment length. Okay, if distance is less than max segment length, then this is, f we break the, the loop.
normalize positions true by default Okay. Um. Hmm. Distance is ten ninety five. Last position, yeah, it's the same that we have in the race. It's the normalization. Crap, 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 crap. Okay, so I want to do two things here. Uh, Okay, one sec, one sec. So I know what's happening. The it cannot reach the destination because of the normalization. Um, so there is two problems that I want to fix. First, I want to actually set the upper limit on uh, this array, like we have in that uh, pathfinding algorithm. Um, so, um, right, max segment length. Oh, that's length. Um, what do we have here? How is it called? next segment so let's just copy this property to here and uh, count smart or equals to this next segments and then we do path equals path list return true so that would limit the amount of segments but we still have this problem. So um, let me put this one here and put a breakpoint because I want to see what happens after we normalize the position. Does it actually work? Because probably, probably it does. And we don't want that. We don't, ah, we don't have the two normalized, I think. Uh, wait a second, wait a second. Where is it? No, we have it normalized. No, wait, wait, this is a new segment here. So we normalize the target position, right? Break second from last and last waypoints are the same. Well, they are the same. Um, 
uh, I don't need it. So we normalize the target position. Mm, but do we normalize our current position? So let me see. Uh, here, oh crap. I shouldn't have returned here. Um, last position two. Mm, where is it? Path list. So target position. One seventy sixty eight eight one eight fifty four seventy four four ninety five. Yeah, the difference. The the only difference is the z coordinate. Now the question is terrain collection weight. Train normal. Oh yeah, no, this is fine. Um, oh. So normalized waypoint, normalized waypoint is minus 2197. Okay. It looks like this is not normalized. Why? Target position should be normalized. Minus ten thirty two, minus ten thirty two. Try normalize position. This one doesn't get normalized. This is our problem. Uh, how can that happen? Try normalize position false. So we only added, wait, no, actually, no. We actually changed the order of execution. One sec. Um, geodata collection. So for each provider, if it returns true, then we do that. Otherwise, we run for the next provider. Okay. Can anyone except terrain collection normalize the position? Region terrain collection. Hmm. Is that what happens? So let me see the zone table. First we add terrain, then region. So we swapped the order of these things. So this probably gets normalized. Wait, 
Marine data collection. Hmm. I don't know. Well, just to eliminate any possible problems, let's try and comment out this code. I think this is our problem, but I have no idea why actually. Yeah, looks like that that is the problem so it detects water volume so what went wrong i i don't understand mm. it just sit the command is just set. Okay, I see. I understand now. Um, yeah, the problem is not in the order. The order doesn't matter in this case. It's just... Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, well. When we normalize the position here, we actually execute this method that takes into account the the volumes, the physics volumes. But when then we call this normalize on the terrain collection, it calls normalize position for itself only, and it doesn't take into account the actual water volume. Because this gets executed here directly, it's not executed on the whole collection of uh, uh, what's its name? Geodata providers. Hmm. Okay, we can fix that in a few different ways. First, we can get rid of this. And make sure that someone who calls this build path normalizes it. 
normalizes every waypoint on the path. So for example, here before enqueuing the position, we normalize it. Okay, another way of doing this is normalizing the points, this point, I guess. Because this one gets normalized anyway. Uh, the two position can be normalized here. Okay, so that's one option. Now, uh, where do we use this path? Uh, let me see. Path, next destination, target position. Yeah, like we can normalize each element when we take that element from the queue. That's another option. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these normalized positions altogether. And this uh, function will just build the path. Well, Another option would be to somehow pass the reference for the whole collection to a data provider collection to, to this thing, to the terrain collection. And then it would be able to call the proper normalized position method. Mm. So Let's actually do uh, multiple approaches. So, can I normalize the two position here if this is enabled? This will make sure that all the positions here are normalized against the terrain itself, always. Mm. Yes. Then, well, we can check if that works actually. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I can't comment on this thing. So now we should be fine because now this two position gets normalized. Now we can reach it. Yes, now it's working, but the coordinates now are weird. So now the the swimming monsters should be um, crawling on the bottom of the sea. Let's double check that. Yeah, all the fishes are at the bottom. Okay. At least now I know that that works. Now we can actually fix it. So, we're gonna set it to false by default. We're not gonna normalize anything here. 
Mm, let's let's rename it actually normalize. Uh, path notes, path segments, we call it. Okay, normalize path segments, now false by default. Now we need to implement the normalization right here. So let's take this zone up here. And normalize every position here. Uh, okay, I need to extract it. Um, Okay, that should be fine now. Uh, let's also rename this thing. Oh, it doesn't have normalized positions. Okay, good, good. It doesn't need to have that. So now we should be able to normalize every position after we've built the path. No, that's not going to work. Because now our path is basically on already on the bottom of the sea, right? Uh, and this this logic will not try to restore it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Actually, that that is working. So because we disabled um, this normalized path segments by default, it can be useful if we don't have any physics volume information and we don't have any nav meshes, it can be useful. But by default, we disable it. So no points getting normalized at all. Then we just normalize it here. Yeah, so this should work. Uh, what do I do? I start the debugging process. Do we still have the breakpoint? Yeah, we do. Looks like that works. Let's go check out the fishes. Yeah, let's hope this fish is an attack. Okay, okay, that works. But we should still be able to see... Yeah, okay, these ones are still crawling. So yeah, that was... Uh, that was... what I was talking about. Uh, we have some monsters that basically crawl even uh, within the water. Uh, and we have some of them that just float in the water. And theoretically, we can have monsters that uh, swim on the surface, but right now there is not the case. We don't have any monsters like that basically defined 
in the game data, but theoretically it's possible. But yeah, looks like that's working fine. Okay, now uh, we can get rid of that. That's working fine. <laughs> that was not the problem. Now we can enable back uh, the nav meshes and see if that works. And I'm gonna use this thing now. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, it's not growing. And the CPU usage is basically the same as it was before, which is actually amazing. Uh, now let's check if we do have the, the pathfinding working correctly. Maybe it's just not working. This is why uh, we have lower CPU usage. What if we, we will separate the file for fishes and not fishes? I don't know. I, I need to think about it. Like, combining all of that stuff is going to be difficult in any way. like it's working it's just um i loaded when the when the npc was already walking Maybe it's not working. I don't know. It's weird. It's not working. Now she's gonna go straight into the wall. No? It does build a path, but I think it's now off by, I don't know, a couple of meters. She does follow a path that's being built by the navigation meshes. She, she goes to that direction, then turns around and goes back. If we, we wouldn't have the pathfinder, then she would just go straight. Now she's trying to go there, then, then go through the portal, but she gets stuck. Then it goes there. I, I don't know. What the hell? So what is this sound? I 
and that guard NPC actually went somewhere there. If a if enough meshes wouldn't be working, that then he would go just straight to that point. I have no idea. Did I change something about normalization? No, not really. This is the new one. I did see him turn a little bit, it's just, it's weird. Let me relog real quick, maybe I can load in time before he starts walking back. So we can check how far he is from crap. Well, that looked fine. Mm. Okay, let's relog as soon as he hits the wall. Still has the small collision box, collision radius. This is really weird. Okay, he's there. So it's not the navigation mesh being off by some value, it's something different. It looks like, looks like this bug with next destination being uh, recognized by the client as the actual destination. It's... There is no reason to check the bugs right now. It would be the same problem with them. Hmm. No, no, I, I loaded when he was already walking there, so... Yeah, it's, it's the next destination. Now what the hell, why... Why it's being treated as the, the actual destination? Mm. Also, what is this? Why is he getting stuck on that corner? Ah, I know what I changed. Um, change the options. So right now we have max destination disabled. Let's see. Mm. 
Now the NPCs should be, should start twitching left to right when they reach the next point. So this is what the next destination uh, coordinate handles. Tries to smooth that out. Okay. Uh, now let's check with the next destination. Okay. Yeah, looks like the client does change its behavior a little bit with the next destination. Not sure why. I guess I'm gonna have to take a look into that. But yeah, this is how it was working before we, we started the, the testing for all the monsters. And yeah, um, the CPU load is totally fine, it's basically the same. Even though we have Prantera monsters and Culvert monsters running um, on the nav mesh. So let's go check out the bugs. Yeah. Looks like it does try to smooth out the movement curve, but it should not do that. Uh, basically, it should only uh, take the next destination in effect when uh, what was I saying? Yes, so it should only uh, take the next destination into effect. Uh, when we have something, when we reach the current destination, then it switches to the next one before the server uh, sends the next packet, the next movement packet. Because otherwise, uh, the the monster will just either stand there uh, on that on that point, or just go into zero location uh, until there will be the next packet from the server. So, uh, how do we check the bugs? The problem is they are fast. Uh, let's actually check the chan chans. Oh, they are on the second level. Or maybe we can check the rats. Wait, what? Um, how do I test this crap? Great. It's not really working.
No, it's running directly to me. Oh, can't see. But yeah, I don't think this is working. Hmm. I guess we need to make a few monsters go over way waypoints and see how that works. But yeah, I don't think this is actually working. Um, it's on AD9. Wait, how does that work? Ah, this is by zone ID, yeah, okay, I see. So it should be working. Well, yeah, we need to test with some NPCs that just walk between a few waypoints. Uh, but yeah, I guess we're gonna do that tomorrow, probably. I really need to, to go now. So yeah, we managed to make it somewhat work, but yeah, it's still pretty laggy. Six hours, oh my god. Okay, so... Let's see, can we find someone to, to raid real quick? Longest stream on my memory. Well, I did stream for like full day a few times with a small break, uh, if that counts. Um, yeah, let's raid Rubadoop. So, yeah, um, good progress today. We actually made it work, but yeah, it's still weird. We still need to find a way to make it actually work. And probably there is something weird with this location. Maybe it's not just one meter discrepancy. Maybe it's different for each location. We will see. Um, but yeah, um, we'll continue tomorrow or maybe on Tuesday. Uh, and by the way, tomorrow uh, in the evening we have a movie night. So if you guys are interested, please join Discord. Um, we will watch a movie together. On Discord. So, yeah. Uh, here we go. So, yeah, thank you everyone for watching. It um, was an interesting st stream. And uh, hope to see you next time. Bye bye.